All right, what is up, YouTube? This is Joe Kempstein. I'm back here once again on the Play Magnus app. And normally, I play Magnus, just simply a game. But today, I'm just going to go through some of the tips and tricks that I use to score so well against Magnus H10. So as you can see here, we have a total of 856,000 points. And from previous years, we have very high point totals as well. Um, I have been playing a bit less, but have no fear. Actually, for Magnus H10, we are number three in the world. Definitely going to fight for the number two spot, but number one is just way too ahead of the pack, unfortunately. Alright, so the first thing that I recommend if you're having difficulty concentrating on the app, try setting up a board and playing through the moves as the game progresses. Um, as keep in mind, always you have as much time as you want to make the moves. So with the board out, you can play through candidate moves and you should. Overall, see better results. Alright, so the first helpful thing in the app, um, when you either draw or win a game, you earn this thing called brain power. And you can use this to either take back a move or get a hint. It's definitely always good to have brain power because, I mean, you could be in a completely winning position and squander it in just a move. So if you have that take back available thanks to the brain power, um, it'll just help you convert more games, convert you know, what would be losses or draws into wins, so definitely nice to have. All right, so the next and last feature that I'll discuss in the app is called the Magnometer. It basically tells you whether you're winning or losing in the current position. This does, however, cost you $7, so, I mean, if you're serious to getting to the top of the leaderboards, then I definitely do recommend it, but if you're a more casual player, just really looking to score better, then it really isn't a necessary purchase. All right, so the first real piece of advice I can give to you when you take on Magnus H10 is to just keep it simple. There's really no need to overcomplicate the game as um, keep in mind you are playing an engine. So if you get into a really sharp position, really complex, um, you may just get out calculated. It's happened to me multiple times, so try to avoid that. Um, but as you can see here, I'm taking on Magnus H10 and I do go for a lot of exchanges. Yes, that's definitely a tip. Um, but you don't want to completely shatter your position at the same time, you know, taking on doubled pawns when you exchange and stuff like that. So here I just go for this completely equal endgame. And the weakness to always remember is that Magnus 10 is simply not as strong in the endgame phase as he is in the opening and middle game. So as you can see here, rushing to a balanced endgame position really might not be a bad idea at all. At least at Magnus H10. And this is really the ideal position that you're going to want to reach, that you're going to want to aim for. Just a nice balanced end game with pawns and being able to simply outplay. As you can see here, we're able to create a pass pawn on the king side, though it does get a bit tricky here on the queen side. As you can see, um, black does have that majority and the e4 pawn is a bit tricky. Um, but here I do take my time. Another tip that you go without saying, uh, these games are not timed at all. So you have all the time in the world to make the move, so... Use as much time as you need. And here I believe I just take and play king to d2. And there's just no counterplay for black. But always be on the lookout because you never know. Um, I've lost many games not having the brain power and just missing a simple, simple tactic. So here thankfully we're able to just create a queen and deliver checkmate. Alright, so at first glance, you might think that this position is just completely lost for black, but the thing is, don't ask me why, uh, Magnus H10 or below in the app does not know how to checkmate you with a rook. Um, also, you won't get mated if Magnus has bishop pair or bishop and knight. Um, so as you can see here, just simply get a draw by the 50 move rule. As pathetic as it is, it is a way of getting points. So I figured I might as well throw this in here as a last tip. So say you're down material, might be able to sacrifice a piece for a pawn so that Magnus won't be able to queen, so that he'll be left with, like in this case, just a rook, and you can get a draw like so. Keep in mind, though, if your king is already trapped in the corner, the engine will be able to calculate the checkmate, so be sure to just keep your king in the central squares, and you should be fine and get a draw. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, and if you have any future video ideas, please let me know in the comments below. But until next time... See you guys. Peace out.